Good morning and welcome to Carshalton Beaches Baptist Church. It's great that you can join us this morning on this all age service. Um, a little bit later today, uh, we're going to have Emma, who is, is our children's and families worker, uh, come and share from God's word. Um, I'm Becca, I'm the youth and schools worker, and I'll be leading us through this service this morning. Um, this week's going to be a little bit different for everyone because schools are starting up. So, well, they've been going on, but starting up in person back in the building. And I think for a lot of people, that might mean that this week will look different to last week and the week before that. Um, and as we look outside, the weather it seems to be heading slightly more towards spring than it was a few weeks ago. But what's amazing that is that as we come together this morning, it is yet another day that God has made. And that's something that's amazing and we can celebrate together. Um, before we get into anything else, I think it's just a great time to pray. And then the band is going to lead us in worship. Father God, thank you that we um, can meet together in uh, no matter where we are in the country or in the world, actually, that we can hear your word, that we can still be church family. Thank you that um, you are a God who's with us wherever we're at. Thank you that your word is exciting and we can learn so much from it as well. Um, I pray that we will be able to uh, hear your voice today um, and tomorrow and into this next week. Amen. Um, if you're able and you want to, why not stand up as the band lead us um, in our first song of sung worship, Our Father Everlasting.
Uh, we just have a couple of notices this morning to draw you attention to. Uh, this week we have church prayer hour. It's on Tuesday at 8 o'clock on Zoom. It'd be great to see you there. Emma's going to lead us in some uh, reflective and creative prayer uh, ideas. Um, so definitely worth checking that out. Uh, and the second thing is, uh, is that Richard Beals is putting together uh, an online exhibition uh, to celebrate the fact that lots of us have been doing all sorts of different things throughout lockdown, um, which is amazing. So if you're interested in being involved in that, what you need to do is send him either a photo, maybe a poem or a, a reflection, something to uh, show what you've been up to during this lockdown. For me, I made this jumper, so I'm probably going to send a photo of that. Uh, that's been what I've been doing in my spare time. So if you've got something you'd like to share and um, to celebrate the fact that we've all been up to different things, then shoot him an email before the 19th of March. If you don't have Richard Beale's email, uh, why not contact the church office? And I'm sure they're more than uh, welcome to help you out with that. As I said, that's by the 19th of March. So make sure you do it by then. Um, I think that's all the notices that we have, but if you uh, want any more information or if anything else happens, then check out our Facebook page or our website because everything will be updated there. Amazing. Um, but this week, we are going to be looking at another I am statement. We've been looking at these over the past few weeks, uh, and this week, um, we're going to learn another important thing about who Jesus said he is. And a little bit later, uh, Emma is going to share what Jesus meant when he said, I am the good shepherd. So I thought, well, shepherds, they kind of talk to their sheep a little bit. They guide their sheep, and the sheep kind of need to be quite good at listening. So I thought I could test you guys and see how maybe good you are at recognizing someone's voice. So in a second, what I'm going to do is I'm going to play some clips from TV and film Hopefully these are quite famous voices and I want you to see if you can work out who's speaking. There's not going to be a picture, you just have to work it out from the sound of their voice. Um, and for, for these, because they're in TV and film, you might want to guess the name of the character who's speaking, but if you're feeling extra clever um, or you're really into film, then you might be able to work out who the actor is as well. Um, this first clip, I'll just give you a little bit of context. The person is talking about an animal called a sloth. So when he starts talking about leaves, that just helps give you a little bit of context. It's one animal. It's one animal that I don't need to sneak up on. Boo! This extraordinary creature is half blind, half deaf, and this is just about as fast as it can move. That's what's going to happen to you if you live on nothing. Um, he goes on to say, but leaves, if you're trying to work out what a sloth eats. Just take a second. If you're with people, why not chat to them and see who they think it might be? Um, I'll just give you a couple of seconds to see if you can work it out. If you said David Attenborough, then you are 100% correct, Sir David Attenborough. Um, and he, yeah, as I said, he was talking about a sloth. He's really well known for doing wildlife documentaries. Okay, um, this second clip, there are two voices, so you can get a bonus point if you can get both uh, people who are talking. Okay, um, ogres are like onions. <laughs> They stink? Yes. No. Oh, they make you cry? No. Oh, you leave them out in the sun, they get all brown, start sprouting little white hairs. No. Layers. Onions have layers. OK, again, I'll give you a second or two just to see if you can work out who either of those uh, voices are, who they belong to. I think this is one of my favorite films, so I definitely got this one. If you said Shrek or donkey, then you got this one correct. I think they're talking about onions there. Um, OK, clip number three might be a bit tricky. If you've got an adult in the room with you, they might get this one uh, 
a little bit easier than you do, but let's see if you can work out what it is. I don't know who you are. I don't know what you want. If you are looking for ransom, I can tell you I don't have money. But what I do have are a very particular set of skills. Again, I'll give you a second to get this one. This one, you might be more likely to get the actor rather than the name of the character. This was Brian Mills, um, but he's played by Liam Neeson, if uh, you wanted to know who the actor is. He's from a set of um, thriller films called the Taken series. I haven't actually seen them, but the quote is quite famous. Um, this is a very short clip. I'll just warn you, um, there's a little bit of background music which might give you a little bit of a hint as to who this person is. You kill them. No. I am the father. Did warn you, I did say it was very short. Um, again, I'll just give you a second or two to try and work out who you think that is. If you said Darth Vader, then you get the point. Well done. He does have a very distinct voice, doesn't he? Okay, this is the last clip. Again, I'll give you a little bit of context. They are playing a game of charades, so they're trying to guess what someone else is acting out, um, which is why there's quite a few random words in there. See if you can guess who's speaking. You got this, Elsa. Mm. Anytime. Just, just do it with your body. Uh, nothing. Air, tree, people, triple. Oh, that's not a word. Oh, shovel boy, teeth. Oh, doing the dishes. Polar bear. Hey. Sorry. Uh. Again, I'll just give you a second or two, see if you can work out who that person speaking is. If you guessed Anna from Frozen, then you get the point. Well done. That's very clever of you. I wonder how many of those you got right. I really like watching films and TV shows. Um, I definitely have been using my Netflix account quite a lot in the past month or so. Um, but I still find it really difficult to recognize just from hearing the voice. I'm really bad at remembering what people's voices sound like but I'm quite good at remembering what their faces look like. Maybe you find this really easy. You're really good at remembering who's speaking. I know that the, the clips that I find easier, the voices I find easier, like Darth Vader, he comes from a film series called Star Wars that I've watched lots and lots and lots of times. So I kind of know what his vo voice sounds like because I've heard it more often. I've only seen Frozen 2 once or twice, so it maybe would have been more tricky for me to work out that it was Anna who was speaking. But um, before we go on to learn a little bit more about what Jesus meant when he said, I am the Good Shepherd, and we hear from Emma, um, let's just spend some more time in sung worth worship. We're going to be singing Our God is a Great Big God, which has some brilliant actions that Yu Sheng is going to be uh, doing for us. So feel free to join in. You might want to jump up if you're able uh, and join in with these actions.
I think that is one of my favourite action songs. I love how you can like shout at the end. That's my favourite bit, I think. Um, our Bible reading this morning is going to be read by Abigail, and it's John chapter 10, verses 1 to 21. And after that, we will go straight into another um, song of worship, um, The Lord is My Shepherd. I tell you the truth. The man who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate, but climbs in some other way, is a thief and a robber. The man who enters by the gate is a shepherd of his sheep. The watchman opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought, when he has brought out all his own, he goes on ahead of them, and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. But they will never follow never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not recognize a stranger's voice. Jesus used this figure of speech, but they did not understand what he was telling them. Therefore, Jesus said again, I tell you the truth, I am the gate for the sheep and all who ever come, came before me were the thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate, whoever enters through me will be saved. He will come out, come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal, kill and kill and destroy. I have come, I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. I am the good shepherd. The sh good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. The hired ma hand is not the shepherd who owns the sheep. So when he sees a, the wolf com, coming, he abandons the sheep's, sheep and, run away, and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The man runs away because he is, hired ha he is a hired hand and cares nothing of, for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me, just as the father knows me and I know the father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep, but none... There are no, but they are not of his, this sheep pen. I must bring them also. They too will listen to my voice and there, and there shall be one flock and one shepherd. The reason my father loves me is that I lay down my life only to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay down of my own accord. I have, the, I have authority to lay it down and authority to take it up again. This command I received from my father. And these words, the Jews were again divided. Many of them said, he is demon, he is demon possessed and raving mad. Why listen to him? But others said, these are not the sayings of the man possessed by a demon. Can a demon open the eyes of a blind? Oh, 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 oh,
So this morning, as Becca said, um, we're continuing in the series exploring who is he? Who is Jesus? And in the last few weeks, we've heard how Jesus said some really, really important um, I am statements about himself, beginning with I am the bread of life and then I am the light of the world. And in the Bible reading we just heard, we heard two more important I am statements shared by Jesus about who he is. And this week, we're exploring Jesus saying, I am the good shepherd. So Jesus tells us that he is the good shepherd who gives his life, who lays down his life for the sheep. If Jesus is our good shepherd, then that must make us who follow him his sheep. Because Jesus laid down his life, he gave his life for us all on the cross. So I brought some sheep along with me here. I'm not sure if you can see them. They're just wandering around a bit. This one in particular likes to wander around a bit. And just imagine this is a hillside. Um, We'll come back to these sheep in a bit. And this morning we'll have a verse to remember as we go. From John 10 verse 11 that we just heard. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd who gives his life for the sheep. I am the good shepherd who gives his life for the sheep. We'll come back to this verse throughout, so try and keep it in your mind. Now, we don't come across shepherds in our everyday lives pretty much, you know, very, very much where we live. But where there are sheep, there's generally a shepherd that cares for them. them. And all the way through the Bible, shepherds and sheep feature in different ways. So we're going to have a bit of a not just for the children quiz to see how well we might remember some of these. So you can keep score, there'll be a score for each one, and there's a maximum of a thousand points to be won. I know, very exciting. Um, So please feel free to post up your scores on the family WhatsApp um, or comment on YouTube as we go along. So... Question number one. In Genesis chapter four, verse two, who was the first shepherd? Was it A, Cain, B, Abel, C, Enoch, or D, Nimrod? So have a think. If you're not sure, if you've got a Bible or a Bible app, you can have a sneaky look if you want to at home. Have a think. Who was the first shepherd? Let's have a look. What do you think? A, B, C, or D? It was Abel. So B, if you got that right, 
you get 100 points. Well done. Next question. According to Genesis 29 verse 9, who was a shepherd when she first met Jacob? Was it A, Leah, B, Sarah, C, Rebecca, or D, Rachel? Have a think. Who was it who was a shepherd when she first met Jacob? A, B, C, or D, what do you think? Let's have a look. It was Rachel. A hundred points if you got that right. Keep score. Next question. What number is the psalm that begins? We just sung this psalm. The Lord is my shepherd. Is it number one, number 21, number 23, or number two? So A, B, C, or D. What one might it be? Let's have a look. Psalm 23. Again, if you got that one right, 100 points. They're stacking up. This one might be a bit more tricky. I don't know. So which prophet shared, the sovereign Lord is coming to rule with power, bringing with him the people he has rescued. He will take care of his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs together and carry them in his arms. He will gently lead their mothers. So was that Isaiah or Ezekiel? A or B? Made it slightly <laughs> easier. So is it A or B? Let's have a look. It was Isaiah in Isaiah 40. Now that one is, was a bit more tricky. So if you got that right, you get 200 points. Stacking up. Next question. So where do we find the parable Jesus told about a shepherd with 100 sheep and one of the sheep that gets lost? Is it in Matthew and John or Mark and Luke? Is it in Mark and John, or is it in Matthew and Luke? Have a think. Maybe have a sneaky look in the Bible. <laughs> a, B, C, or D, what do we think? Mm. Let's have a look. It's in Matthew and Luke. <laughs> if you got that, another 100 points. Well done. Next question, just a few more. According to John chapter 21, verses 15 to 17, who did Jesus command to feed and take care of his sheep? Was it John? Was it Peter? Was it James? Or was it Andrew? A, B, C, or D? What do you think? Let's have a look. It was Peter. 100 points. Well done. Last two questions. Next one. According to Mark chapter 6, verse 34, who had compassion on the people because they were like sheep without a shepherd? Was it John the Baptist? Was it Jesus? Was it Pontius Pilate? Was it Peter? A, B, C, or D. Which one can it be? Let's have a look. It was Jesus who had compassion. A hundred points. So the last question is for 200 points. And I hope that everybody gets 200 points with this one. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. Where in the Bible do we read this? Where in the Bible did we just read this? <laughs> was it in Luke? Was it in Matthew? Was it in John? Or was it in Mark? A, B, C, or D? So let's have a look. It was in John. So I wonder how many of you got a thousand points? No, no. Oh, Phil, well done. <laughs> so the good news is if you've got a thousand points, do let me know because you win a sheep. There you go. <laughs> I will give you a sheep. Okay, so we've just had that recap 
a um, bit of a recap with just a few of, um, examples of where shepherds are mentioned in the Bible. And I hope you did well or it made you think or it made you look in your Bibles. Um, but to understand a bit more why a shepherd cares for their sheep, let's think about it this way. So I wonder how many have, of you have a pet. Maybe right now you're at home, you're watching this, and you have a cat sitting on your lap, or a goldfish in a bowl, or a hamster in a wheel, or a rabbit in a hutch, or best of all, I think, a dog sitting and looking at you. So if you have a pet, you, it's a big responsibility, isn't it? You must be willing to look after it, to take care of it. You need to feed it and make sure it has water to drink. You need to keep it clean and take it to the vets when, it's, when needed. And not only that, you need to keep it safe, don't you? And make sure that it can't wander off and get lost. And if it does, the first thing you want to do is to go off and look for it. So a good shepherd does exactly the same for their sheep. So what did Jesus say? The verse to remember, he says, I am the good shepherd who gives his life for the sheep. So let's think about the shepherds that were around as Jesus spoke these words about being the good shepherd. And imagine, if you will, that this is a shepherd's staff. I couldn't find a real one. So feel free to bar like the sheep and make sound effects as I share if you'd like to. So let's think about the Eastern shepherds. So in the days of Jesus, The life of an Eastern shepherd was a hard one. The most important thing that a shepherd had to do was to make sure and provide that the sheep had food and water every day. So early in the morning, the shepherd would set out and lead off the sheep. They're a bit tired at the moment. Excellent. They're noisy, these sheep. So leading them to green pastures where they could eat. And the shepherd had to watch the sheep constantly. Otherwise, they'd wander off and get a bit lost. So the shepherd's job was a dangerous one. Having to guard the sheep against animals, wild animals, and especially against wolves. And the sheep were often with the shepherd for many years, so he got to know them. And the shepherds named the sheep, had a name for each one of them. So let's see, Lenda, Yusheng, Mike, Colin, Chris, and the rest of the sheep are over there. (laughs) The sheep would know and understand the voice of the shepherd, so they'd respond. But if a stranger called, the sheep would lift up their heads, feel alarmed, and turn and run away. And in Palestine, the shepherd would walk in front of the flock of sheep to make sure that the path ahead was safe and the sheep would follow. Sometimes the sheep had to be really encouraged to follow, especially when the shepherd led them on the narrow goat paths. Because on these paths, the sheep would walk in a long single file and could easily have a bit of a panic. So the shepherd would bang his staff on the stone and the echo would reassure the sheep that the shepherd was there even though they couldn't see him. And when the shepherd found a new patch of grass for the sheep, he would go over to it, check it first, with his staff and make sure it was safe. He would break down thorn bushes, dig up poisonous weeds, fill in snake holes, kill scorpions and make the pasture like a table for the, for the sheep to eat from. And as well as grass to eat, to eat, the shepherd also needed to find water for his sheep. And what you might not know is sheep are afraid of fast running water. So the shepherd would dig a pit next to the fast running stream, which would fill up with water and then he'd block it off. 
And once the water was calm and still, the sheep could drink from it. At the end of the day, when the shepherd was out with his sheep on the hills, he had to get them into a sheepfold for the night. The hillside sheepfolds were just open spaces enclosed by a wall. The shepherd would stand in front of the fold and put his staff across the entrance. And each sheep would pass underneath. And as they did, he would count them and check that they weren't injured in any way. And some sheep may have cut themselves during the day and the sheep would bring out some olive oil and rub it on their feet to help them heal quickly. And sometimes the sheep would put olive oil on their heads, on the heads of the sheep. So when they went out into the heat of the sun, it would protect them from sunstroke. So having got all the sheep safely into the sheepfold, the shepherd would lie across the opening to stop the sheep wandering in and out and to protect them from robbers and thieves and wolves. So the eastern shepherd and his flock of sheep, whose every need was taken care of by their shepherd. And Jesus is the good shepherd. He takes care of every need of those who follow him. And Jesus is the answer to everything, every need we have. He showed this through his life, through his miracles, through his teaching, through healing with compassion. And we see his compassion in action in Mark chapter 6, where in this account of the feeding of the 5,000, It was the end of a busy old day for Jesus and the disciples. So they headed off on a boat to go and have a rest in a quiet place. But the people who had been with them and in the towns, they saw where they were heading. And they run ahead on foot and they arrived at the place where Jesus was heading to before Jesus got there. So they got there ahead of him. And when Jesus arrived and got off the boat, he saw this large crowd. And we're told that he was moved with compassion towards them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. So he began teaching them many things. Jesus fed them spiritually first. Then he went on to miraculously feed them all physically with a few loaves and fishes because he was caring for them as a shepherd, knowing what they really needed. And what did they need first? They needed spiritual food, Jesus, the bread of life. And maybe sometimes in our lives, we choose not to follow, but to run ahead of God for what we think we need physically in our lives around us. When God is at work, feeding us spiritually first in what he knows we need. Now, I spent a bit of time this week reading up on sheep and their character traits in preparation for this morning. And I'll come back to that in a moment because it also brought up some sheep jokes and um, I felt I should share three of my favourites. I felt this was appropriate. So, number one. What do you call a silent sheep? Ready? Sheep. (laughs) Thank you. Next one. What do sheep become after a heavy workout? This one literally made me laugh out loud. (laughs) A woolly sweater. And last one, particularly appropriate. What do you call some sheep who go to church? Ready? Baptists. <laughs> well, there we go. Very good. Anyway, <laughs> in my research, I did find as well that one um, sheep character trait that consistently comes up is that sheep have a really strong instinct to follow what's in front of them. 
When one sheep decides to go somewhere, the rest of the flock does usually follow, even if it's not a good decision. And maybe we're a bit like this too. Maybe we have a tendency to follow whatever and whoever is in front of us, even if it's not a good decision. I remember once when I was teaching and in the playground and some of the children started running and they ran past a group of others and said, come on. And this repeated itself with different groups until the majority of the children were just running round. And as they ran past, I asked those who were following, why are you running? And as they whizzed past me, there was a chorus of, I don't know. And they just carried on running and following, but not really knowing why. And Jesus is the good shepherd. And that in itself tells us that there are bad shepherds. And throughout the Bible, we're told to be wise in who and what we follow. And bad shepherds are people and things in our lives that will mislead us, that will take us in the wrong direction and away from who God is. And we live in a culture where there's information overload right in front of us all of the time. And the source of that information and the motivation behind it is becoming less and less clear. And knowledge, understanding, feelings, and even trust in the wrong people, places, and influences can lead us in the wrong direction and away from God. Beware of bad shepherds. It's very easy to be misled, and the risk and the danger that God calls us to know is that bad shepherds steal life away from us. Bad shepherds are out for themselves. So do we easily listen to and follow after and even trust in the opinions of those who don't know us and who we don't know? Are we choosing to trust and follow their wisdom ahead of Jesus? who does know us and does know what we need? And how often are we influenced by things that are not of God, that aren't who he is, that don't fill us up and satisfy, but leave us empty after a while? So who are we following and listening to? Because Jesus doesn't describe himself as a good shepherd, but says, and our verse to remember, I am the good shepherd who gives his life for the sheep. He is the good shepherd who came to take care of every need of his people, his followers. He cares for the defenseless. He came to give life and not steal it. He came to show people, show us dangers and pitfalls and guards against those who would mislead. With the bigger picture, which is amazing, that Jesus leads those who follow and keep following him into his everlasting kingdom of perfect peace and justice. And he offers contentment, fulfillment and security only found in who he is. And God is always wanting us to do life with him and face problems with his help. For us not to try and lead by ourselves, by our own efforts, but to seek him more than our circumstance, more than what's around us. So Jesus, the good shepherd, calls us to listen for his voice. He requires trust from those who follow. We just sang that song earlier. I will trust, I will trust in you alone. So he requires trust from us who follow. So our faith is based on who he is. Found through his word in the Bible, through prayer, through being in relationship with him and other people who know him. With the Holy Spirit to help us be wise when influences around us might mislead. So we can ask ourselves, 
what does God say about this? Is this in line with who Jesus is? Jesus, the good shepherd, calls us to follow obediently. Sheep can follow a shepherd, but if they're not obedient to that shepherd, they can still go all over the place and get a bit lost. When we obediently follow after the good shepherd, Jesus, we're following after goodness itself. That's amazing to me. And that's what brings the peace and the joy on the journey. And when we walk in his footsteps, we can walk with his courage, his determination, his endurance that he showed us when he was obedient to his father and died on the cross for us. And there's a saying that goes, if you're struggling with faith, stick with obedience because God is faithful. And Jesus came so we know who to follow. He will not mislead you, deceive you, confuse you or leave you like a bad shepherd. He is the good shepherd, the author of peace, of truth. He is present and active and able. And lastly, Jesus, the good shepherd, calls us to let him lead. It's a choice for us to be willing to let him lead, learning to trust, especially at the times when we're not quite sure what's happening or where we're going. Learning to walk and not run ahead of him, waiting on God's timing, resting in the knowledge that he is the good shepherd who will only ever lead you where you need to go. It might not be where you want to go, but it will be where you need to go if you let him lead. His will plus his way equals the right direction. And it's clear that this doesn't mean that some paths will not be dark or difficult or with trials and really hard. But it means he is with you. He will lead you. He goes before you and will get you through to the other side. The alternative is to listen to and follow bad shepherds who will lead you away from God and leave you when trouble comes. So through giving his life for us, Jesus takes care of our every need to lead us to God. So he calls us to listen for his voice to follow and keep following obediently and to let him lead. So we come to a short time of prayer and Glenda will read through the words of Psalm 23 and I'll pray in between. So let's pray together. The Lord is my shepherd. I have everything I need. He gives me rest in green pastures. Thank you, Lord, that you are our good shepherd. Thank you that you give us everything that we need. Help us to share your goodness with others. Help us to listen and follow you. He leads me to calm water. He gives me new strength. Thank you, Lord, that you strengthen us. Thank you that you bring peace to our lives. Help us to share your peace with others. Help us to listen and follow you. For the good of his name, he leads me on paths that are right. Thank you, Lord, that you guide us each day. Thank you, Lord, that you are always there to lead us where we need to go. Help us to trust you more, to listen and follow you. Even if I walk through a very dark valley, I will not be afraid because you are with me. Your rod and your shepherd's staff comfort me. Thank you, Lord, that you lead us through the dark times. Thank you that we can trust you to get us through. We pray your comfort for those we know who are in a dark place or facing difficult times. Help us to listen and follow you. 
You prepare a meal for me in front of my enemies. You pour oil of blessing on my head. You give me more than I can hold. Thank you, Lord, that you pour blessings into our lives. Thank you that you are the one who heals us. We pray you bring healing to those who are unwell today and help them to know your love. Help us to listen and follow you. Surely good, your goodness and love will be with me all my life and I will live in the house of the Lord forever. Thank you, Lord, that you never stop loving us. Please strengthen us that we might show your love to those around us and keep our eyes fixed on you. We pray especially for all those going back to school this week and the teachers and staff who will teach them. Lord God, please draw close to them at this time that they would know your strength and presence with them to guide and help. You are the good shepherd. Help us to listen and follow you. Amen. Amen. So we'll sing our next song of worship now, which will be a video of Strength of My Heart. So sing along or reflect on the words.
invincible, my strong tower. You are unshakable, mighty savior. Your love's unbreakable. You're the strength of my heart. As we close, let's um, pray. Father God, thank you that you care for us so, so deeply that you sent your son, Jesus. Thank you that Jesus is the good shepherd, and that we can listen to his voice and know that he's leading us where we need to be, that we can trust him because he's led us this far and he will continue leading us forward. But this week, as we go about our day to day, help us listen for his voice. And the decisions that we have to make, Lord, please let us hear what you're trying to, trying to say to us. Let us not get distracted by everything that's going on with the busyness that going back to school might mean about life being a little bit different this week, about still being in lockdown. Let us not get distracted by all of that but let us just be able to hear your voice. Give us moments in the day just to be able to pause and listen. Thank you that we can trust that you are leading us in the right way. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. It's been great to worship together, even though we're in different households. Um, have an amazing week and we'll see you again soon. Bye.